So I'll start by starting with a bit of a confession. Uh, I love bread. Um, more I love pastries, but this one's easier to bring in and less tempting. Any of us who have struggled with our weight knows there's a big difference between believing in being healthy. Most of us, all of us, believe, believe in being healthy. But to actually be healthy is a very different thing. So my main point this morning in my sermon is going to be very much the difference between believing in something, like believing in being healthy, versus actually being something, being healthy. So as the, as the disciples said on the road to Emmaus, when they were with Jesus, that their hearts were burning, and that he opened the scriptures to us, I hope something that I had this morning will help open the scriptures to us. Uh, what I want to share is actually one of the most transformative ideas that I learned in all of my seminary experience. So I, I hope it's inspiring for you as well. So our, our reading this morning... For the Lord. Um, okay, so uh, our, our reading this morning, one of our readings was from uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. And 1 Peter 1.21 reads, Through him you have come to trust in God. Trump, come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. So in this particular passage, uh, the words that I want to focus on are trust in God. And the way it's generally translated um, from the Greek. So what I really want to mostly talk about this morning is one particular word, but this verb phrase. That's generally in this passage, 1 Peter 1.21, is to trust in God. And trust is pistos. And ice, pronounced as like what you put in your soft drink, um, is believe or trust in theon is God. But the word that I really want to focus on is ice. It's a preposition. It's, uh, it's a little word. But this word is used hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times throughout the Bible. But what's so interesting is it's not always translated as in. It's also translated as for, like for the purpose of, also translated as to, toward, and also into. So when we think about this verse... To, have, to trust in God, it also means to trust into God, to trust for the purpose of God. And the point I was making with the bread is that, you know, our belief is not just intellectual. What, what, what happens with our belief is awesome. It is mysterious. It is beautiful. And I think this word really helps bring it home for us. So other parts of scripture, this word ice, this word is translated as four. So in Luke 3, 3, John is preaching the baptism of, re of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And he uses ice in the gospel of Luke as four. Literally hundreds of times this is used all throughout scripture. But a lot of our translations will often just translate it, especially in passages like this, as in. Another passage that we're probably all familiar with, John 3.16, also uses ice. So in John 3.16 is generally considered the most popular verse in the whole world. Uh, world Vision, Bible Gateway, and a number of different sources say that John 3.16, most popular verse. But it's generally translated as all those who believe in God um, shall have eternal life. But, but it also represents all those who believe into for the purpose of other areas, ice is also translated as into, um, it's used as into the house or into the land of Israel. So it's signifying that we move from one place to another. It's like we can believe in being healthy, but our belief moves us into being healthy, healthy people. So ice, other places, ice is used as on. So like seed falling on fertile ground. Jesus says, for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. It's also translated as toward. In Acts 20:21, 20, by having repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. So it's also translated as toward. So again, movement. 
change, that we're changed in our belief. It's one thing to believe in being healthy. It's another thing for me to stop eating so many pan dulces. So as we can see, this word that's very common can be translated in so many different, so many different ways. In the online etymological dictionary, etymoonline.com, it says that belief had by the 16th century become limited to mental acceptance of something as true. But in Strong's exhaustive uh, Bible Concordance, if you've heard of it, it's, it's pretty much the predominant book that's a dictionary of every Bible word in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. It basically defines ice as a preposition that means to or into or figuratively for the purpose of. So we know what this word means, but it's not always translated this way. And if we look elsewhere in the Bible, it's all over. It's in John 6, 29, John 7, 38. Literally, I could go on and on. But if you look at other scripture where it's not used, there's plenty of other scripture that brings this, this union, this union in our belief, our union to Christ. Think of Matthew 25, very, very well-known verse. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. That our belief isn't about some intellectual activity, but we believe into Christ. Truly, that we become part of the body and blood of Christ. Just as Matthew 25, it says, you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. Or if you think of Acts 9, where Paul is visited on the road uh, to Damascus by, by Jesus. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? He wasn't just talking about some ghost somewhere. He was talking about his community. He was talking about us, like us as the body of Christ. So there's this intimate union between Christ and his followers. So to believe into or for the purpose of or toward might sound very strange to us, but it's, it's, enormously, it's enormously powerful. So in our gospel reading from this morning, what is said is that in the breaking of the bread, in the breaking of the bread, that the disciples, they saw Jesus, that he was right in front of them, but they didn't see it. And I remember in seminary, in my Greek course, when my professor said this about this particular word, and especially about John 3.16, it's very important scripture to many of us, uh, so many scriptures, but it was almost like the scripture in Jesus had been right in front of me, but I didn't see it. So I, I, I would hope that this scripture could help us especially see how our faith draws us into, into Christ. And in especially the breaking of bread, that Christ would be present for us. But not just at the altar, not just as if God is everywhere, but that God is in us. That we are drawn into, into God for the purpose of God. That when we receive communion in the Eucharist, that we're reminded that we are the body and blood of Christ. That Jesus is not something over there. That my faith is not just some idea. But that truly something is mysterious. Something is beautiful happening. So no matter who you thought you were when you came in this morning. No matter what, you know, no matter what you've done. That when we, we receive, when we, when we confess our sins, that we are forgiven. That we truly believe into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are made new. That we are loved. That we are totally different. That we don't just believe in being healthy. We become health. We become love. We become transformative power in the world. So my prayer for us, my prayer for us this morning is that we could believe those words. We could be like those disciples that in the breaking of the bread, we could see Christ. And not just here, but here. And we could remember that every day, every week, all the time, to be transformed, to believe into God, so that we can take our love out into the world and transform the world like we have been transformed in our Lord Jesus Christ.